Hey everyone! Thanks once again for following this Hearts of Iron series and for your support. Though of course in the future we will be doing other scenarios with Hearts of Iron in a similar style, currently I am pre-planning a XCOM 2 narrative series that will premiere in February. It's going to be epic, story driven, and with your help we can make something truly special. I want the characters in the story to be created by you, the viewer. That is why I would like you to leave a character description in the comments down below. This is the info I would like to know. First and last name of the character. His or her nickname. The nationality. And a biography. Types of classes will be decided by me, as I predict too many requests being a sniper and what else. Thanks in advance. Please don't forget to share this particular video with the Hearts of Iron community and enjoy the rest of the episode. With Mauritania having joined NATO, experts believe that soon more African countries would join or be allowed entry. It therefore came to a surprise when Libya had received the opportunity to join the Collective Security Treaty Organization, also known as CSTO, therefore contractually obliging Russia to come to Libya's aid. This turn of events was massive. In a matter of days, two of the mightiest countries, America and Russia amongst others, were on the brink of entering the war. The west coast of Senegal, a tragedy unfolded as both local troops, but also close to a thousand French men, were surrounded by the zombies. They did not have enough vehicles to evacuate overseas, and though help was on the way, it might not arrive on time. Shortly after, Chad had also joined the CSTO, as indeed predicted that more African countries would join the larger united factions. At the end of December 2001, the war in Afghanistan seemed to come to an end. America had made quick progress once the armies were linked up and Kabul was easily taken. There were few Taliban who still resisted, but they were not able to do any significant damage. Soon, a new government would be placed under vision of the American eye. And so Afghanistan was puppeted by the United States. Hamid Karzai was put into interim leadership and the country was allowed into NATO as well. Many believed the reason for this was to keep a watchful eye on neighboring countries with possible terrorist regimes. Due to America's final war days going so swiftly, most soldiers were able to return home by Christmas and spend the holidays with their families and loved ones. It was something the American people were grateful for, as they all knew that soon after, Many would be sent out again towards Africa, but for the moment, all was joyous. As the common people were celebrating Christmas, the politicians of the Western world were preparing the next steps into actually declaring war and invading Africa. Many politicians agreed that, even though everyone knew what was coming, declaring war around Christmas and New Year would be demoralizing. Let the common people celebrate while they still can. Let them hold their loved ones one more time. Then. When the new year has begun, is when the world's gaze would shift towards war and bloodshed. Dutch Prime Minister Wim Kok, amongst many other presidents and PMs, accepted America's call to arms to aid in the war against the zombies. Though the acceptance had already been signed on December 28th, many countries would not make it public until the first week of January 2002. In the final days of the year, Cameroon was notified that they had been accepted to NATO as well. And then, it was finally New Year's Eve, and 2002 was upon the world. Though 2002 would be the year where the world would go to war against the zombies, it was also the year where a new economic currency would be introduced, namely, the Euro. Plans for a common European currency have been around since the foundation of the European Union in 1992. Ten years later, the project came to fruition in the form of the Euro, guided by the European Central Bank in Frankfurt, Germany. Though giving up national authority over currency might have downsides, the economic benefits of trading with neighboring countries and partners might outweigh them. British, Danish and Swedish delegations had already voiced concerns and demanded a possibility of an opt-out for their respective country, which is why they refused to participate in the initial digital introduction of the Euro in 1999. Now the board was set and the pieces were moving. Though many countries had agreed to America's call to arms, some were not yet in a state of war. America, Britain, France and Spain were amongst the first, and alongside the Moroccan coast, much activity from these countries' navies could be spotted. But these forces were merely scouts or had the function of evacuating the Moroccan civilians to the nearby Spanish-controlled Canary Islands. Though strict quarantine rules were established, 
For security reasons, America had positioned an armored division on the islands as well. Merely three days into the new year, news came out that the infection now had spread to Palestine. NATO had talks with Israel to prepare defenses to contain the virus within its borders when it reaches their country. With most of the world going to war, containing the virus itself should not be forgotten about. In America, a wave of military migration occurred. From all states, troops were migrated to the east coast to prepare for the invasion of Africa. The exact perimeters of the invasion operation were not planned yet, and it would still take several months before this would be decided. In the meantime, New recruits were going through rigorous training to prepare for the zombie war. After being sent out to Afghanistan, families, friends and partners once again had to say goodbye to sons, husbands and fathers, not knowing if they would return. A war like this had never been fought before, so a feeling of unease ruled the worrying families. At the end of the first week, Japan announced it would join NATO as well. Prime Minister Yoshiro Mori said he was delighted to stand now as allies beside the Western countries in protecting all of mankind. Soon after that, Japan also declared a state of war, noting that Earth had never faced an enemy like this before, but united, they would surely overcome this evil. Though Mori's speech was beloved by many, people in Africa felt that help had come too late. In 2002, of course, new technologies were possible. Dutch Prime Minister Wim Kok issued the authorization of the build of modern heavy equipment to increase the gain of resources that were now more valuable than ever. With this change, the gain in chromium and tungsten would approximately increase by 10%. In Africa, things were looking bleak for Mauritania. Its leaders had already foreseen this, but their country's political system, infrastructure and army were in shambles. They were cut off spread out and undersupplied. Rather than fighting, those remaining held up at camps that they desperately tried to defend against the incoming zombie hordes. The undead had reached Morocco and quickly started eating their way land inward through the west flank. It was likely that NATO would use the Moroccan harbors to start the invasion and hopefully push the zombies back from the northwest. Some hoped Russia would do the same in Libya. On January 12th, India also joined NATO, as they would be valuable ally with their focus on military expansion over the last two years. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Bajpaye felt optimistic in attacking the zombies from the eastern side. If India's help would be required on the west coast, Bajpaye argued that convoy ships would need to be provided by other countries, aiding India's massive amount of troops and vehicles along the sea. An allied invasion of the central coast of Africa was highly unlikely, and countries like Chad would still have to fight this war by themselves for several months. Many knew that they did not have the power to do so. Morocco showed its first signs of crumbling as the country was split in half at the northern shoreline. The zombies started to head northeast and arguments were made to hasten the Allied deployments, not as an attacking force, but as a defensive unit to prevent Morocco from falling. Not too long after, as expected, Chad fell to the ferociousness of the zombies. As more and more countries declared a state of war, the world's economy shifted towards that of a full-blown war economy. Though still not every NATO country was involved in the war, it had the potential to have 34 countries team up and unite against the zombie horde. And that was not even counting the other factions like CESTO. Though the zombie uprising indeed was a massive tragedy, it managed to achieve something that had never been done before. It united the rest of the world. The war that would later be labeled World War Z was officially upon us. Though China was not involved with the war itself, it would send two voluntary divisions towards Holland. To many, it was a mystery why they were doing this. Though the two countries were fond trading partners, most were not impressed with the absence shown by China, as it was likely for the divisions to stay in Holland as a defensive unit. But if the zombies would reach Holland's borders at all, this would not be for many more years to come. At the end of January, the zombies entered Tunisia, and in response, Tunisia joined the CSTO. Shortly after, the tragic news arrived that Senegal, its people, and the French division stationed there had fallen. France therefore was now the first western country with a major loss against the zombie horde. In the capital city they mourned the soldiers who were trapped and had met a slow death. A national mourning was not common during time of war, this would usually come after. 
but the tragic circumstance of the soldiers already stationed before a state of war was declared gave reason for this. And tragedy was followed by more, as Mauritania now also officially had fallen. Politicians promised that the wishes of Mauritania's leaders would be fulfilled. A memorial monument would be erected to remember the leaders who brought the countries of NATO together in the conflict to stand against the undead horde. They did what so many other, more powerful politicians did not dare to do. Germany, that at that time had accepted the call to arms but was not yet at a state of war, changed this on January 29th as they announced plans were being made to prepare the migration of troops towards northern Africa. And time was of the essence. Morocco was falling quickly. The zombie force seemed unstoppable. A pushback from Morocco now seemed unlikely. NATO leaders were presented a dilemma as to where to begin the invasion. With these continuing circumstances, it might lead up to an invasion at a harbor already taken over by the zombies. This would complicate things, as once the harbor was liberated, time was needed to get the buildings running again. In Holland, the two Chinese divisions had arrived. One of them was an artillery division, and as indeed expected, they were set up as a defensive unit. Holland's military had no say in the matter. More and more people were not impressed with the lack of involvement shown by the Chinese politicians. As fighting would be done in Africa, which was far from the Dutch supply lines, attrition was of a valid concern. A military theorist might have solutions to work around this, or at least decrease the chance of units posted in Africa to fall victim to loss of strength through continuous sustained attack. Prime Minister Wim Kok thought army logistics expert Hendrik van den Bent would be perfect for the job. With the world's political eyes fixed on the war, it was time once again to provide some diversion from the serious matters for the common folk. The increased unity of NATO resulted in a massive amount of tourists heading to America for the 2002 Salt Lake City Olympics. Though it was sport-related, many felt quite patriotic about the games, as it felt like Earth showcased what it could achieve if working together, more so than ever. These were the 19th Olympic Winter Games, and they were held in Salt Lake City, Utah, United States, from February 8th to February 24th of 2002. Salt Lake City's 1995 bid for the 2002 games clearly defeated all their contestants as they won the bid in the first round. It would mark the eighth time that the US hosted the Olympics. 78 nations took part with Hong Kong, Nepal, Tajikistan and Thailand participating in the Winter Games for the first time. The games were dominated by Norway, Germany and the hosting United States. Each day, a minute of silence was held to remember the fallen countries by the zombies. Morocco lost more and more ground every day. Help could not arrive early enough. Holland, however, was at the moment mostly focused on its country's election. It was a big year for Holland, as with the new Euro, a new Prime Minister was about to take over from Wim Kok as well. To no one's surprise, the zombie issue took most of the attention during the political campaigns. A number of political parties were reshuffling their leadership. Wim Kok would retire, and for the moment leadership would be given to Walter Bos from Partei van der Arbeid until the next Prime Minister would have been definitely decided by the actual election. Gerrit Zalm took over as parliamentary leader of the VVD, Jan-Peter Balkenende would be the Christian Democrat candidate, and Famke Halsema would represent the progressive party Groen Links. Due to the conservative look towards the war with the zombies, many believed that Jan-Peter Balkenende would come out victorious when the elections were finally held. Spain was the first of the Western countries to set foot on Moroccan soil, stationing multiple artillery, armor and motorized divisions in several Moroccan harbors to the north. Though the Americans had not yet arrived, a multitude of air missions on the zombies were performed by the US Air Force. This mostly was to slow the incoming zombie horde down to station more units in Morocco. Then, on the 24th of February, the first US divisions had reached Morocco. Though morale was high, everyone knew they were not big enough to push the zombies back. The American soldiers mostly helped evacuate more Moroccan civilians and secure the harbor and its vicinity for the incoming horde. Blood was about to be spilled on both sides.